What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're going to be checking out my top 5 favorite gaming mouse pads from this last year. So as we roll into 2021, I'll be showing you my top 5 favorites that came out since the start of 2020. We're also going to have a few runner-ups, so stay tuned to the end for that. And what we're going to do is talk about the top 5 in order of my favorite, and give a quick rundown of each and you know what I think about them. And then at the end, we're going to do a side-by-side-by-side-by-side -by -side -by -side comparison of the more detailed stuff, so you can get a better idea of how they stack up next to each other. If you see anything you like, I'll have it all listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. But first up, a message from our sponsor, and you're going to like this one. That keyboard's been a pretty hot commodity in the community, so definitely check it out while you can. Now, starting us off at number five, we're gonna have a very unique Cordera mouse pad from Endgame Gear. This, the MPC 890. This version I have here is one of three. It's their medium sized one, and it's 890 by 450 millimeters. Now, obviously, this like navy blue and yellow look really isn't gonna be for everyone when it comes to aesthetics. So that might be a turnoff, but why I wanted to include it is because Cordera is a very, very interesting uh, surface overall, and it's a really unique material. It's actually used for things like uh, military wear, luggage, backpacks, the very strong fabric, and even like motorcycle pants and jackets. Use this material for that abrasion resistance so it's gonna be a tough surface but still give you a pretty slick glide so it's just really interesting which is why I wanted to include it as you see up close it kind of resembles this like beaded surface but it's not it's just the stitching to this fabric now for durability this is gonna last you a while and the surface won't break down over time however if you bend it like you see up at top it will have a permanent crease in it and this is alongside as you can see another mouse pad we'll talk about in a minute so just do your best not to fold this to avoid that creasing but then another plus side to this fabric and its durability is the complete water resistance. If you knock over a water bottle on your desktop, the water will collect and it won't soak in. As for the outside stitching, it is a black outline with the yellow stitching in the middle. So it is going to stand out visually, like I said, and it is slightly raised. Um, when you're putting your mouse over it, there is a noticeable edge when you're getting towards the end of your mouse pad. You will feel it hit the bottom of your mouse feet. With that being said, for the stitching, it's not 100% perfect. You can kind of see where they sort of started and finished the stitching. Not a big deal overall, but like I said, you will feel this on your mouse feet at the edge. Underneath, the bottom surface is rubber, and it does stick to your desktop pretty well. I will say, because of the overall fabric here is heavier, it barely budges, but if you do give it a big push, uh, then yes, obviously will move, but no issues during gaming and regular use. Now what I'll do for each mouse pad is show you a scale in terms of roughness from 1 to 5. 1 being a very soft material, 5 being a rougher material, and also show you a graph of the overall speed and glide to it. So with that being said, I will rate the MPC 890 a 4 out of 5 in terms of roughness, meaning you will feel it a little bit on your wrist, but you're also going to feel that tougher weave on your mouse. But then in return, I'm also going to rate this a 4 out of 5 in terms of the glide speed, because just due to that Cordera surface and the particular weave it has, it's very tight, a bit harder, so altogether it's a pretty fast mouse pad. Now for this next segment, as you start to build the format of this entire video, you'll see how it goes along for each one. We're gonna do a sound test of each mouse pad so you can hear how that particular fabric and surface sounds with your mouse. But I'm gonna be using my Razer Viper Ultimate, which has the Hyperglide equivalent 100% virgin PTFE feet. So you can hear how it sounds when you're using it. So as you heard, it's a bit of a louder surface. Kinda of sounds like you're DJing a little bit. So yeah, coming at number five, the Endgame Gear MPC 890 with their Cordera Surface. Now for number four, from X-Ray Pad, we have the Aqua Control Plus. 
I'm sure you're familiar with X-Ray Pad. They make a ton of different mouse pads out there. You probably see it on YouTube. But why this one's so unique is because the surface is actually uncoated. So there's no graphic or anything on it. And the material itself, it's gonna be more raw and feel a bit different. So yes, you can buy the Aqua Control Plus with a graphic and stuff on it, but it's gonna feel different. And also you can buy them uncoated in either black or white. This one is 900 by 300 millimeters, and it also stands three millimeters tall. And honestly, during use, I can really compare this to the MPC 890, the one you just saw with the Cordera Surface. They're similar, but also very different. So that one was more of a speed pad. Here with the name, you know, Aqua Control Plus, this is more of a control pad. But what's funny is, uh, to the touch and on your mouse, they feel very, very similar. I would also rate this a four out of five in terms of roughness, again, on your mouse and also on your wrist. So you're gonna feel it, because again, the coating here, it's uncoated. So you're gonna have that more natural kind of grit to it on your wrist. But with that, you're gonna be sacrificing some speed. So I would rate this a two out of five on the speed rating. And I just found with this, everything was very precise and very controlled. In terms of stitching, all white to match the actual mouse pad. Um, the edge is slightly raised, but there's no interference at all with your mouse. Then again, underneath it is a rubber padding. Not the grippiest out there, not gonna budge when you're using it. Uh, just very, very similar with the MPC 890. And again, the sound test. Now this mouse pad has been great for durability. It looks pretty much brand new still, and since it's white, it's not gonna show any wear from your mouse or your wrist over time. Most dark mouse pads start to sort of turn lighter, just naturally from your skin cells and dust, as nasty as that sounds, but this still appears like new. So the Aqua Control Plus is very, very interesting. You get more control versus speed. And it's just funny how similar in just design and feel the MPC 890 is with the Aqua Control Plus, but they're two different mouse pads. So if you want that speed, you go Endgame Gear. If you want this control with this particular surface, you go the Aqua Control Plus, uncoated. But again, they have so many different ones out there. Uh, this one I thought was one of the more unique ones and just the one that gave me a very different sort of feel which I'm not really used to. So that's why I wanted to include it and definitely worth being mentioned at number four. Now coming in at number three, we have the Fnatic Dash. I've showed this off on the channel before and it's probably been my most used mouse pad of 2020, but yes, it is coming in at number three. So there are two other ones that I like better, uh, but also like I said in the intro, stay tuned because we're gonna have a side-by-side -side comparison for all of them. So at 950 by 500 millimeters, this is definitely a bit of a larger one. It's slightly bigger than your traditional extended mouse pad. They do also make a smaller size as well. Now the surface here is a hybrid surface. It's a very low friction F15 material. What does that mean? Who knows? But I can definitely vouch for the speed. You can see for the material, it's that equal X and Y stitching here. So the glide, whether you're going vertical or horizontal, it's gonna feel smooth and equal all across. And I like how they kept it minimal with just the holographic logo on the bottom right side. It's not big, it's not in your face obnoxious, just nice and tucked away in the corner. Now with my time using it, I give this a two out of five in terms of roughness. So it is on the softer side in terms of touch and on your mouse. And I'd give it a four out of five on the glide scale because yes, this does have a really nice smooth glide to it overall. So you complement each other with the softer material with a better speed and glide to it. I wouldn't say it's gonna like improve your flicks or anything like that but it really does complement a nice set of PTFE feet. The stitching on the side is very tight. It's also a lot slimmer than some of the wider stitching I've seen, and it does not interfere or anything with your mouse. And then again, flipping it over, it's the same exact rubber that we've seen on the last two mouse pads, that same exact base. It's really not gonna budge unless you're trying to move it. So all in all, I'm definitely a big fan of the Fnatic Dash. It's just a really soft surface, great for speed, but also because it is a softer mouse pad overall, uh, you get a good amount of stopping power. Like it gives you the ability to, you know, dig your mouse in if you want to stop real quick because of the surface, three millimeters. Uh, it just has a it has a nice give overall, I guess I could say. So definitely my most used mouse pad of the year, and obviously one of my favorites as it comes in at number three on this list. But that's not without its durability issues because this is also a victim of that permanent creasing like you saw. So just for testing, I left all the extended mouse pads folded over a chair overnight, and the dash and the endgame gear pad were the only two that had that mark left in it. 
Now, is this going to be compared to? Because it's a very similar surface to the Glorious Fire pad, which just came out a month or two ago. Uh, but this is the OG version. This came out a few months before Glorious did, and it's also a lot bigger than the size that Glorious offers. But speaking of Glorious, coming in at number two, we have the polarizing Glorious Ice Pad. This, one of their Artisan Series mouse pads, and um, I love this thing. Now, I say polarizing because not everybody likes this. Some people love it, some people hate it. I am on team love. This is a super unique mouse pad. This does unfortunately just come in this one size, but it is four millimeters tall. So it's the thicker one so far on this list. But what makes this so appealing and different is the glass infused surface up top. It is super, super smooth. And also with its name being Glorious Ice, it's cold to the touch. So it's really interesting, but the glass infusion here is butter. It's butter, guys. So this Artisan pad is most often compared to the actual Artisan Shidenkai, which is a very similar surface. I have that. I showed it off, I believe, at the beginning of 2020, and it's a great mouse pad. But my issue with that was, after just a week, whatever sort of coating they used for the glass surface, it was very quickly starting to wear down and have noticeable like cracks in the actual mouse pad surface. Like You could see the wear and tear. I've been using this for a little over a month and a half now, and there is zero difference from day one to now. So durability on here, in terms of the actual coating and how it holds up, is very, very impressive. And I just can't stress enough how smooth this is. Actually, I can because I gave you guys the rating. Um, I'd say it's a zero out of five in terms of roughness, meaning that yes, it is, like I said, pretty much butter. Whether it is your wrist, your mouse, whatever mouse you're using, whatever mouse feet you have, it is going to be ultra, ultra slick. For the glide speed, I'd rate it a five out of five. Super, super fast. And I'll take it a step further. If you're using ceramic feet, you know, I know there's a Lexip ceramic feet out there that are round. Glorious has their G floats. If you're using that with this, it's a 10 out of 5 in terms of speed. And I'm not kidding. So as you heard, with the zero additive feet, as well as the ceramic feet, not only does it feel very smooth, but it's virtually silent. So that's an added bonus if you want to game with this and not disturb anybody, because like you heard with the Cordera mouse pad, that's very loud. This is the complete opposite. Super fast, super smooth, super, super silent. It is... This is crazy. It's a crazy mouse pad. And like I said before, you either love it or you hate it. You're going to have to adjust to this type of mouse pad surface. But for me, it's been nothing but good things. All thumbs up. In terms of the stitching on the side, very tight as well. Also very thin and discreet, so it doesn't interfere with the mouse. It's barely raised at all. And the rubber bottom base does seem to have a bit of an extra grip to it. It has a bit more tactility to the touch, so it's not going to budge for being a smaller mouse pad. Now, there is one thing I do want to point out, and it's not a deal-breaking issue, but worth mentioning. The surface will attract a ton of fingerprints and oils from your hands. As you can see, it's definitely a magnet for that. The remedy, though, for it's pretty simple. Just use a microfiber cloth and rub it down, and it'll be like new again. I recommend doing this at least once a week to maintain that like new look. So again, I prefer this over the Artisan Shedekai just because this has been better in terms of durability. And this was going to be number one until in November I received a new mouse pad that really blew me away. And that is the 2020 actual FX Artisan mouse pad, the Hayate Atsu. This is the newer 2020 version they recently released. And this version is the extra soft variant. So they do have different ones you can order. This is just the config that I got. And yes, these are actually imported from Japan. It costs 8 to 200 yen, and it took about two weeks. So that's definitely a downer. But what makes this number one is just overall the quality here. When you get this in, you can tell this feels absolute premium. The surface itself does feel pretty smooth. I'd give it like a three out of five in terms of roughness. Um, maybe more so two out of five with your mouse, a three on your wrist, because it does feel smoother while you're gaming. And what's interesting is it has this sort of chevron pattern to it. You can see in certain lighting. Even though the X and Y axis does feel pretty smooth altogether, again, for the horizontal and vertical uh, glide on your mouse, but the chevron pattern is pretty interesting to see. For the glide speed, I'd rate it at right in the middle at 2.5 out of 5. 
And since they ordered the extra soft version, it's just spongy. I think it's the best word to describe it. Like you can see when I physically press down into it, you see it rebound, but it's slow because it is just so spongy soft. And then that's also gonna give you more stopping power. Cause again, since it is so soft, you can really just get a feel for it, dig your mouse into it and get that control. But like I said before, with the overall premium durability, on the sides, the actual stitching is pretty much near flush with the actual mouse pad top coating, and there is zero interference. So in terms of that, this is the best stitching I've seen. And flipping it over, it is definitely the grippiest undercoating I've seen. You can just tell it's a different breed from the other mouse pads out there. So number one is the 2020 refresh with the extra soft version of the Hayate Atsu. And it's just a really premium feel overall while still being super smooth with that really just spongy soft material to it. It's a really unique mouse pad that is tough for me to fully describe without you actually feeling it for yourself. And honestly, like it blew me away. I was all ready to give the Glorious Ice the number one mouse pad on this list until I got in the Atsu and really just fell in love with it. I wish it was, I wish they made an extended version versus this smaller one, which they do consider as the actual extra large variant. So yes, number one. Now, like I said before, two runner ups. We'll, we'll run through these real quick because there's still the actual comparison stuff I want to get to. This is a super long video. And the first runner up is gonna be the Sky Pad, which is an all glass mouse pad. You can pick this up in a few different colors as well. And no, just because it's glass does not mean it's gonna cut you or anything. It's nothing like that. And I've said before, I'm just not myself a hard mouse pad surface kind of guy. I can never really fully adjust to them. So that's why I didn't make my top five necessarily. But again, if you are someone out there who does prefer a hard pad surface, then there's nothing gonna be more hard than actual glass. It's a frosted glass. So if you have lights at your desk, it's not gonna be like reflecting off that and blinding you or anything. And for durability, it's glass, but it's not fragile. Depending on what kind of floor you have, if you drop it, it'll be just fine. So if you're in a heat of rage, unless you like just go bury bonds in this thing, it won't shatter. Now, yes, naturally, because it's glass, it is gonna be louder, both on 100% virgin PTFE feet, as well as just for comparison, I showed you how loud it was with the ceramic feet, with the G floats. So it's gonna be loud, but again, it's glass. That's the sacrifice. You want super speed here, you want the fastest of the fast out there. Uh, the Sky Pad, I think, is definitely one of the best, which is why it's a runner up. It's not for me, but it could be for you if you prefer this type. How about another runner up? From Odin, we have the Infinity. And I'm putting this as a runner up because it is very similar to the Fnatic Dash. I just felt from my testing, it wasn't as quick. There was less speed on the Infinity versus the Dash. And that's kind of odd because to the touch, they feel pretty much identical. They sound pretty much identical. Um, but when I took a look up close with the macro lens, you could see while very, very similar looking, the braid and the stitching to the Fnatic Dash was a bit tighter. As a result, it gave the mouse a more equal glide all across versus on the actual Infinity, it would start to sort of tailspin out after just maybe like 12 to 16 inches of a glide. So again, two very, very similar pads in terms of the construction and the feel and weave to it, but just the Dash in the end gave better results I felt and was a bit faster. Now the Infinity does have the edge over the dash in terms of durability. So I did do that same fold and crease testing on the Infinity and it did not crease like the dash did. So I'm giving you two options. If you prefer speed, you go dash. If you prefer that long-term durability, you go the Infinity. So yeah, the two runner-ups, 
plus my top five. Now, to bring it all together, obviously you saw the order in which this went in, but as always, like we do with these top five videos, keep in mind, this is my personal list of the ones that I've tested throughout the year. These are the ones that I think that are worth mentioning the most. And also, a mouse pad's not gonna make you a better gamer, but what it will do is complement your play style for better or for worse. So that's why I'm showing you different options, different ones out there that could complement you and your mouse, your mouse feet. So to recap real quick for durability, the Minerva pad is gonna be probably one of the best in terms of that long term, like this will probably last you probably close to five years because if it's a really tough fabric, whereas the dash has shown more use in a shorter time period, whether you're looking for speed or control, again, depending on your play style, your mouse, your DPI, all that stuff's gonna play a factor into this. But the ice pad is by far the slickest, fastest pad on here. Well, again, just factoring in the top five, not including the sky pad. But yeah, the ice pad is something real special. The dash is also pretty quick. And for a tougher surface, kind of resembling a harder pad, that's where the Cordero comes in from Endgame Gear. However, if you're all about control, the Artisan Pad gives you a really nice blend of the two. It's soft, but it's just so spongy, so it gives you that flexibility to really dig in and get control and stopping power. Again, I'd say also a nice blend on the dash pad. And of course, with it being in the name, the Control Pad, a tougher, grittier surface with more control, not so much speed there. So this has been a long video. If you're still watching at this point, thank you. Drop a comment down below. Uh, say something stupid, like, I don't know, uh, pee is stored in the balls. You know how it is. That's how I know you're still watching. Uh, but thank you guys for watching this video, the top five mouse pads of 2020 as we roll into 2021, showing you some of the best that came out in the last year. Again, obviously, in my opinion, and giving you a lot of variety of different surfaces out there. So lots of flexibility, complementing your play style. If you want to check them out, I'll have them all listed for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.